Coming up on this episode of Bro, Do You Even Talk Pinball? We're going to go over news and updates, including the leaked Jurassic Park photos. We're going to review the second best game in the world, World Poker Tour by Stern. All then and more, coming right up. Her crown has been polished, and she's ready for her coming out. America, welcome to Buffalo. And now, the Hall and Oates of Pinball Podcasting, Nick Lane and Kevin Manny of Buffalo Pinball. I know you're looking good, Internet. Boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. Boom, boom shakalaka. I'm sorry, Tim Kitzrow. Yeah, Nick Lane, you're looking good. God bless you. <laughs> right back like at Buffalo. you. Look at that. <laughs> Buffalo. Every, all of Buffalo's looking good. <laughs> We're looking good. If yeah. Buffalo, I'm going to put it this way. That's a commercial from an 80s, right? Yeah, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> if, if Buffalo was, quote unquote, looking good in the 80s, I mean, it must look spectacular now. They were uh, <laughs> they were really trying to convince some folks that yeah. Buffalo was the place to be. They're lying. Really, it really was. They're lying. <laughs> They're, yeah. <laughs> Marketing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, what's going on? What's up, pinball players? It is Tuesday, July 23rd. Yo, what's up, pinball yeah, players? Kevin's, Kevin's got his <laughs> That's right. morning radio DJ stream deck. There you go. And he's going to get his money's worth with that thing. That's right. And who wouldn't? It's amazing. I can drop that whenever I want. Yeah. So uh, we're one week away, a week and like a, two days away from Pinburg. Yep. So the hype is real. I'm excited. Summer camp. Here it's, we a week, it's a week later this year than it was last mm-hmm. year. So I'm feeling a little bit off, but yep. um, excited for that. So we got a good show lined up. Let's kick it off by going through the partner thanks. Let's uh, pull it up here. All right. I'm going to take one for the team and, and dive in. It's all you, buddy. From the top, Comet Pinball. CometPinball.com. Makers of LEDs and the sweetest cotton t-shirt in the universe. That's Comet Pinball. You got Double Danger Pinball. Speaking of t-shirts, we got some pretty damn good t-shirts themselves. DDPinball.com. They also have some Buffalo Pinball swag. Check them out. The Mod Couple Pinball.com. That's where uh, Kevin took out a loan to get more mods for his Jersey Jack Pirates machine because he looked at it and says, where's everything? There's nothing, yeah. there's nothing on it. They just came out with it. If you have the standard edition, you can get the rock thing, the rock formation to make it look like the LE. So Come on. Don't let those uh, standard edition scrubs feel like they're uh, <laughs> LE members. This is an exclusive club that we pay good money for. How dare you? Flipping out pinball. Flip and out pinball.com. They are a distributor, so if you want to be cool like everybody else, but you don't have a pinball machine, well, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? You can order pinball machines from flipinoutpinball.com. That is run by Zach Many from Straight Down the Middle Podcast. Why did I say it? every time? We're not going to mention he's not sponsoring that. It's just flipping no, out. Yeah, no. I don't know who. I don't know who owns. There's, there's no what Straight Down the what? I have no idea who owns Flipping Out Pinball. By the way, I'm going to turn this into a 10 minute sponsor ad because right. somebody complained on uh, YouTube that it's too long. So Here it comes, gonna, buddy. I'm, I'm doubling it up. This is for you. This, this is for you, buddy. <laughs> I listen, not in the way you want me to, but I listen. All right, Flipping Out Pinball. Next is Pinside. Pinside.com, your favorite place to go to to argue with other uh, middle-aged adult males, mostly, I'm presuming. Uh, great place. We love Pinside. That's how, what helped get me into the hobby. Uh, they have everything from buying, selling, forums. You can troubleshoot help. You can see top-ranked games, top-ranked. Check it out. Jersey Jack Pinball Maker of the most beautiful pinball machines on the planet. Wizard of Oz, Hobbit, Dialed In, Pirates of the Caribbean, and the brand new Willy Wonka, which is, is, is shipping. Oh, shit. I buried the... Yeah. Oh, that's, the, oh, all right. that's a preview. Well, sneak attack. Scrap it. <laughs> We're done for the night. Uh, pinball.edu. Uh, you can ch- go over to pinballraffle.org, and you can buy for $40 a chance to win a brand new pinball machine. Woo! You could be one of 250 raffles are sold, so you can just go crazy and buy them all, yeah. and you're definitely going to win. Just do that. Yep. <laughs> uh, Community Beer Works. 
Community Beer Works, best beer in Buffalo, New York. Uh, check it out next time you're in town. Then Pin Stadium. Pin Stadium makes uh, phone controlled lighting kits for your pinball machine. You can even take a picture of your phone of a color in the machine, and it will emulate that on the lighting strip. That's technology. It's he's, pretty amazing. He's pretty much in the future at this point. <laughs> Pinball Arcade. Pinball Arcade makes virtual recreations of real pinball machines. Pinballmix.com. Pinballmix.com. He's crushing it, man. He's, oh, yeah. he's super busy. We've got him too much uh, business. He's going to be a pimper with a booth. He's done a good job. Yeah. That's what happens when you do a good job. People learn about you in this hobby. Uh, you can have Pinball Mix make a custom audio mix for your machine. Don't waste your time doing it yourself. Don't make it amateur hour. Let a professional do it. Uh, he'll also do a special uh, Easter egg for you if you use the code BUFFALO, and you'll save 10%. Last but not least... Titan Pinball, titanpinball.com. Buy your silicone rubbers in there. Throw, chuck out your uh, garbage rubber, uh, generic OG rubbers in your pinball machines and get that. And also get yourself one of the most comfortable mats ever. Again, a lot of these folks have coupon codes when you type in Buffalo. You're just going to find out if they do or not. And you'll be surprised at the savings. Look at check it out. All the there savings. you go. Oh, shoot. Kevin, that was only like six minutes. Oh, man. Let's do it again from uh, the top. All right. All right. <laughs> we can pull, pull that out a little That's bit That's right. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> you know, some people haven't figured out you can just skip it if you don't, you know, if yeah. you don't want to hear it. There's a fast it's weird. We put it at the thing. same spot every time. No. Yeah, and weird. by the way. But don't do that because our sponsors. Don't, don't do that because I'm going to throw some zingers in there. <laughs> oh, yep. Maybe have some raffles and some giveaways. Anytime. Here's the deal. Anytime that we do raffles and giveaways from now on, we're going to bury it in there somewhere. There you go. So. You know, and also Nick said he's gonna start doing the ads like Bill Burr, so you gotta stay tuned for that. I'm wrapping up. <laughs> Meundies. Yeah, Meundies. <laughs> Might just throw in some sponsors that don't exist and throw them under the bus. Exactly. All right, Kevin, take it from the top of the news. All right, let's uh, let's get into the uh, the main story, the top story, your top story. Uh, actually, we gotta we gotta do this first. I forgot we got we got this. Here's the tip. It's the latest pinball news. So hot, it's on fire. Yeah. So then we gotta go to that. Nope, not that. I screwed it up. I screwed it up. Man, this is what we need. It's Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah. Surprise. Leaked photos. Yeah, so these a bunch of leaked photos of Stern's next pinball machine. Uh, Jurassic Park got leaked onto the internet. Yeah, that's, uh, people were saying it was going to be Jurassic World, but this looks like it's the original Jurassic Park yep. from 1994. That movie. Yes. Not the new ones. Right. Which is interesting. Because we have a Jurassic Park one already. Not that you can't make remake things. We've, we've seen this happen a million times. Yep. But it's, um, the, it's the, I guess, classic at this point. Yeah. Classic Jurassic Park. Stern is allowed to recreate, remake old games. Other companies are not. <laughs> yeah. That's according, how it works. According to uh, random people on YouTube or right. fans, uh, God forbid you do that. Yes. <laughs> um, if, you, if you recreate Pirates in 27... Uh, what, what, so Pirates was released, shipped maybe 2018, uh-huh. and the last movie in Pirates came out in 2017, but people were, were up in arms yep. <laughs> that they released it afterwards. But you can make a, a pinball machine in a movie that came out 25 years ago, yep. and it's copacetic, that already has as long as you're stern. Yeah, exactly. That's, That's fine. fine. Yeah. That's fine. Nothing but who's about. keeping score? Oh, no. It's <laughs> not me. All right, let's go over some of the, uh, the, the details here. So it's a Keith Allen design. Rick Nagel is on code, so that's the combo that was on um, Iron Maiden as well. So that's oh, okay. good combo. We like that. Yeah. And they have a new artist. His name is Johnny Bergeron, better known as Johnny Crap. Okay. That's his art, artist name. I tried to look at the link, but it wouldn't open Zombie Yeti, for me. Zombie Yeti, his, his real name is not Zombie Yeti either. So Interesting. Artists have uh, well, pseudonyms. You heard it here first. Um, but I, like, I looked at his website, and it's, um, it's very Zombie Yeti-esque. So I like what I'm seeing. Uh, this is this is the pro we're looking at here on the screen. Um, so a quick rundown of some of the features. It's got Jungle Explorer Vehicle, a simple, fun mechanical toy. It doesn't do anything, I'm guessing. Old T-Rex. Yeah, it's probably a bash toy, right? Or it's like... Mechanical. So that's uh, the yeah, one toy that moves. It does something. They're featuring at the top, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, molded T-Rex. So on the pro... So I think on the pro, it's got a T-Rex. On the premium LE, the T-Rex eats the ball is what kind of the consensus is. Well, that's a novel idea. Yeah. I wonder where they got that idea from. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> just have, we're just having fun. Yeah, and you know we're going we're based on joshing. a few photos that are out there, and we're just all figuring it out. Uh, three up posts, a spitter, spinning target, which is a spinner. Wait, can we talk more about the boot rate? Is that how you say it? <laughs> I, you know, I had to look up what that was. <laughs> that's when I've never heard this before until Stern, or Stern Pinball. That's like some industry insider <laughs> lingo for it's a flat piece of plastic, plastic instead of plastic a crap molded, yeah, like toy, cheap yeah. plastic crap yeah, that's that'll what break. You get on the pro, yeah, yeah. We get a lot of it. It's, it's featured all over. Yeah, 
uh, right shooter lane, one half pipe steel and wire ramp, uh, right spiral steel and wire ramp feeding upper flipper, tear it on, left T-Rex ramp merging with something, left raptor tower, half pipe steel and wire ramp. This is all very exciting. <laughs> Three up posts. This is not. This is not the real like. No, this is what they. This is what somebody cobbled together. This right? is what they tell distributors. So I see. They show distributors stuff before everybody else gets I to see, see it. Oh. And one of their uh, distributors, who is under NDA, took screenshots of everything and leaked it on the internet. Good job. <laughs> Thank I you. mean, I, I do sympathize with Stern on this. Like yeah. that's kind of a shitty thing to do. Let's just wait a couple days. Yeah, exactly. Um, don't do don't, this. Yeah, don't do that. You're ruining it. Stern's, for, yeah, for Stern. like, and then Stern's gonna clap down because they overreact potentially and yeah don't do that right uh it's got three flippers so it, it's a welcome in my collection but we're uh, still gonna show this stuff oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> three pop bo- i mean it's everywhere like yeah. it's on yeah all over facebook all over pin side it's like yeah sorry cats out of the bag yeah now. <laughs> we didn't do it you give you it to the, you it. give it to the kids you yeah. know <laughs> uh three flippers three three pop bumpers four multi balls and it's got the john williams musical score which is pretty awesome um so it's gonna have that iconic jurassic park music yes so right here is the premium. So let's let's pop back. So the pro, it's got the black armor and legs. Premium also has black armor and legs, but different art. I don't like the art on the premium for what yeah, it's I worth. Yeah, I kind of like the pro, pro looks art better. So fine, solid. Yeah. Oop, premium, and then there's the Ellie. Ellie's got Ellie's some green fine, armor. Good. Looks pretty cool. And the thing to note is it's all dinosaurs. There's no actors on any of these. My question is, are we going to be able to save Timmy from the fence? You know, that's what people need in yeah. their lives. With Timmy, uh, get off the fence. The actual scenes from the movie where <laughs> yeah. he's on the fence and he's getting yelled at. <laughs> get off the fence, Timmy. It's a good mode. Um, and then the, there's the Ellie again. So three different variations of dinosaur art. And uh, that's what you got for the cabinet art. Let's take a look at the play field. So here's the, the pro play field. Um, it's, it's hard to dissect stuff from photos, but, you know, you got this kind of cool spiral ramp on the right. Uh, on the left, there's a dinosaur. It, does it come out of the dinosaur's mouth? It kind of looks like, or he, is he just hanging out above the ramp? Hard there? to tell because these are not. These are just like the leaked photos. Yeah, we'll get high res ones. I'm imagining in a couple days. Yeah, there's your uh, there's your little vehicle thing there. Uh, there's the upper flipper, um, and then we're getting there. We're getting there. Habermania. <laughs> Here's the premium. We can't see a good picture of, of Newman, though, yet. <laughs> so there's his the, hands. This is the premium, so this is the playfield that's going to be the premium in the yeah. alley, and you can see the dinosaur is, like, turned to the right. So people are speculating that he, like, grabs the ball off of the wire oh, from there. Oh, okay. Which would be kind of cool. Which, by the way, this is definitely inspired. I mean, it's, it's like they're mimicking the Data East version of jurassic park i mean the the whole map is in the center yeah newman's even there like featured like there it's the the colors of it it just looks like that it's like an homage to that game yeah the layout looks from these kind of hard to see pictures there's there's things in the layout that looks very familiar yep so um let's see there's there's some some overhead shots of the the pro play field so you can get the kind of top down view that everybody loves um, there's the, the premium play field. When you go back and forth between the two of them, it's really not that much, uh, not that much difference between the two of them. Honestly, like just from a, a toy standpoint, like you don't look at one and go, Oh, it's missing a massive upper play field or anything like that. They're pretty similar feature wise. Um, and then here's the, here's the game instructions. Here's how you play. So this is smart missile. There yep. is, there's a smart missile. Yeah. Oh, I, I was reading it. There's chaos. Like, yeah, there's, there's chaos. Um, there is Raptor Tribal. I mean, they're really. It's almost like a, a redo of the original one. Yeah. Well, I mean, they named things after modes in the original one. Who knows if they actually play like it, though, right? You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I'm not saying it's a. It's we got to put it in CAD first. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and then, then you'll uh, <laughs> then you'll know for sure. Uh, the designer is Keith Elwin. He his uh, other game, his first game was Iron Maiden. So that's a question from Ricky Rue in the chat. Uh, Chaos! Yeah, I can hear all the all the call outs. You shoot, you the, shoot nope. the thing to um, you shoot, you spell T Rex and you begin a T Rex event. You shoot the control room to begin modes. It's definitely like okay, we're gonna look at the original, mm-hmm. pay homage to it. Yep. And then uh, here's a new version of it. Yeah, and uh, I think I mean just looking at the at the layout, it uh, it seems. Like a very full-featured Stern game, I don't look at it and go, 
oh, there's nothing on the play field. It's not like a Star Wars or something like that. It's got some some uh, molded toys in there. It's got the cool dinosaur and stuff. So I'm, I'm looking forward to playing it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Ellen crushed it on game one. And yeah. looking forward to seeing what he does. I'm sure he's going to design a game that, that shoots great and is fun. Yep. I'm not worried about that at all. Yeah, so hopefully we'll get one here soon. Um, all right, so that is Jurassic Park. We'll, I'm sure we'll learn more in the next week or so. And, um, about that we'll get the official high-res photos and all that good stuff yep so uh next up is stern announced the pin it's the home model of star wars with a tiny little screen in the back and it's almost exactly like the um spider-man game they did one of my business partners joked uh what can they possibly rip off star wars pro to make the pin <laughs> <laughs> did it <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I guess they didn't have to take off much, right? No. <laughs> they just, just fit it in there. No. Um, so, of note, so the, if you don't know what the pin is, so Stern has tried multiple times to bring a lower-priced home model machine to market. It started with Transformers and Avengers back in, like, 2013, something like oh, that. Oh, there was an Avengers one, wasn't there? Avengers and Transformers, they yeah, were the same. Right. And then they did Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yep. And then they turned Spider-Man into Star Wars, and this is what they released at um, Comic Con. And but this is like forty-five hundred dollars. That's the problem. That right? is, I mean, that is the problem. Yeah. I mean, I so I don't know what to think about the pin. You know, I, I know people will criticize it. We're pinball people right. online, Facebook, and, and pin side, and then somebody will inevitably say, "Well, you're not the market for it." Well. Yeah, I get that we're not the market for it, but we're sort of left scratching our heads when you've got a $4,500 home pin edition when the other version... I mean, you can get that version used for that much these right. days, if not even less. Um, so what exactly is the value proposition? Because there's still pinball parts in there that can break mm-hmm. on it. So it's not like it's some version, a home version, where like it never breaks or... You don't have to f- worry about fixing it. Like, no, you still got to worry about all that. So I'm confused. I don't know. I don't really get it. Yeah. And I don't know. It seems like, and, and a lot of the, the pushback on this was, I think <laughs> due to the fact that the way it was marketed, they, they had this like three day countdown on YouTube. It's like, we're going to be revealing our next game. Get hyped. Everybody got hyped. They marketed it to pinball people. They didn't market it to uh like home rec centers and things like that sure i think of like gary pools and stuff that you would probably go and buy a pool table here in buffalo um this is probably something they would they would have like a multi-game arcade cabinet and probably the star wars game and some pool tables and stuff for your home game room kind of thing and i'm sure that's the market they're going for for this uh but it was not marketed that way good job giving gary's pools a free (laughs) plug gary pools uh, stop saying gary pools they're not paying us (laughs) (laughs) come and get it we'll edit that (laughs) exactly um yeah, it's got the TIE Fighter on a rod now instead of the TIE Fighter on a spring, so they really upgraded it. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's where a lot of that, that pushback came from, is from the way it was marketed, really. Um, and they put it on the certain Facebook page, and it should really... I, I, I feel like the Spider-Man game, they didn't really promote like that, or the um, or the other two, the Avengers and... I remember the Transformers was kind of everywhere. Like, I remember seeing it. I, I played it. When it first came out, yeah, you almost like, won one, didn't you? Almost. <laughs> almost two two spots away. I was in a playoff for one. That would have been amazing. And I would no, I wouldn't have been. <laughs> Throwing the it would have just created a lot of trouble for me. <laughs> I was happy with like five hundred bucks. And yep. there you go. So I mean, some of the features of the game, it, it does, it it looks okay for a home game. It's just you know, it's the rules are pretty limited. Um, the um, Austin Macker, who used to stream for Buffalo, he had the spider-man home edition and he he would get to the wizard mode like every time he played that game so okay. and the rules are pretty much the same in this so very light on code the the play field's fun to shoot uh if it's like uh spider-man it's got that cool little like where it holds the ball in the the spot and then you knock it out for multi-ball that's pretty cool yeah um for uh for a stripped down home game i think it's if you're really casual like just want to have this in your rec room kind of game it's fine but for anybody who's into pinball this is not gonna hit it's not going to scratch the edge for you, right? No. I Yeah, I don't... I can't say I get it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah. Because 
for for anybody who anybody who's into pinball is gonna like probably have a game they want like they, they remember going to the arcades they're playing or they've been to the arcade recently and played a new game and they're gonna be like i want that game and then they're gonna go and find it used or whatever anybody who's just buying for their home room game room and they go into a showroom and they see this they might buy it that's yeah i mean I, I mean i I think it Stern came out with something like the home model edition of, of whatever, and it was like two thousand bucks, and it was just really stripped down. Then you're like, okay, mm-hmm. I, I get it. Mm-hmm. It's for somebody who wants a pinball machine but doesn't want to spend five thousand dollars and is not serious. Yeah, it's not an enthusiast, right? Yeah, I get it. But this is like at the price basically of their enthusiast grade pinball machine. I don't. I don't know. I. I imagine they know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, they've made a bunch of these. So yeah, I remember the, um, with the, the transformers one, I don't know if they've fixed or improved upon this, but you couldn't open it up at all. Yeah. I like think now you it. can, there's a coin door on it now. So you, you can, can just open it up. It. Yeah, so, like normal. okay. So there, there have been improvements, but it's like, it's taking that, that gap where it was like, okay, we're going to take these features out and reduce the price. It's kind of pushing it back up towards a, the pro price. Right. So you're, there's not as much of a difference. Gotcha. So, all right. I don't know. Well, I think it's for people that don't know any better. Probably, hopefully. Yeah. Or don't care. I think so. Well, hopefully, you know, Stern makes money on this and can subsidize their other ventures. Right. It's not yeah. one of their cornerstone games. And yeah. uh, we know we got, we got Jurassic Park right around the corner. We'll so. probably be talking about a pin three years from now again. It'll be the same design and we'll be saying the same thing. Right. So, future is Nick it, Lane and Kevin Manny can yeah. same conversation just rewind it back to episode 40 pretty much we'll play, just play this play back again we're talking about and then and then clip that in yep just clip in uh, the name change it around yep um all right some other news and updates so Willy Wonka since our last uh, show Willy Wonka standards <laughs> started shipping and they're kind of all over the place now and also LEs have started shipping and we have a friend here in Buffalo I just got a text from him and he says my Wonka is in Buffalo, so he's going to be getting it from the, the shipping center here soon. And hopefully we'll be able to go over there and play it with him. Okay, I'm uh, excited. So I'm going to help him set it up, I think. So nice. that'll be cool. Um, Black Knight Premium got an enhancement to the upper play field, okay. uh, which is basically a post that goes in the where the ball comes around. And there's that rubber there. It pushes that out a little bit, so the ball feeds to the upper. Oh, flipper. it's a physical yeah. update. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that way you can stay on the upper play field even longer. Okay. All okay. right. Um, there's been a, a number of Coda updates. One we were able to show you exclusively here on Buffalo Pinball last night. The new dialed in 1.7 code. Uh, it's got a few new features that are cool. Uh, specifically, the Chaos in Quantum City mode has been uh, re- revamped. And it now has super jackpots, which are cool. So after, I think it was like five jackpots the first time around, it lit a super jackpot at the uh, Crazy Bob Street. That's good. It needed something. Dude, and it gave me like 160,000 points for that. What? Yeah, it's, it's pretty lucrative. Now. So that's not out yet, that I code? Have you have it. I have it. Because you're fancy. Skip Natty has it. Okay. Because uh, we're BFFs with JJP. So, I, I get it. Yeah. But it's like Joe people listening to this right now can't get it just yet. Not yet. Okay. Uh, but it's coming soon. Okay. As long as, you know, we're helping beta test it, and as long as there aren't any major issues, they're going to release it. And everything ran well last night. It, so. Kevin's machine didn't catch on fire. It didn't. And nothing blew up, and uh, Skip's been to play in it, too, and his didn't blow up. So, fingers crossed you guys will have it soon. Um, other updates were uh, a huge revamp to Game of Thrones. So, what do you think about, what is it, four years after that, three, four years after that game out, came out? Let's, I, let's just blow it all up and, and it's make It's kind of crazy. Yeah. I would have never imagine that there'd be any updates to that game other than bug fixes yeah let alone revamping things mm-hmm. i thought that game was was good code wise yeah so did I. I mean there if you said well what can be improved i can there are things in there that i can probably point to but you know compared to a lot of other stern games that come out that's not really on the list of like what needs attention right and uh, then lo and behold <coughs> well it's kind of people used to people would say that uh Oh, people are saying Kevin. People are saying. Yeah. A lot of people are saying. That's an inside joke. But uh, people would say, oh, you know, Dwight, once the game's done, doesn't really address or update it. And now he's like, fuck you. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, that's, like, that's a direct quote, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He totally said that. And uh, yeah, we got a update. I was looking at the readme today and like he, he retooled like the houses, mm-hmm. which is cool. He added Targaryen in there as yeah. an option, which wasn't before. So, I mean, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um. Looking forward to playing it. Yeah. I mean, I I like Game of Thrones. You don't. You're not a huge fan of it. No, I 
I was starting to like become okay with it, mostly because I would typically do okay on it in tournaments. And now it's like, all right, well, I got to learn all over again. You'll be okay. <laughs> Which I know you can do it. Uh, <laughs> did, does Tuna still have his? He do, he does. And if you guys want to see some footage of it, he streamed it on Saturday. Oh, so, cool. Um, he's got the LE. So what is, did he LE give action. you his impression of the code update? He like did how not give me his hot take. Do you know how people are receiving it? I think on the stream, he said it, it's, it's interesting. He likes the fact that it kind of breathes some new life into an old game. Sure. You know, if you've had yeah. a game in your collection for a couple of years, it's like, oh, there's all this new stuff in it, in which I can appreciate, right? Um, but yeah, where's the Ghostbusters code, right? Oh, additional allocations or additional resources have been allocated to Ghostbusters. So that's what they said. That's what they said in the uh, the last oh. Stern of the Union update. Well, uh, don't you have like a box? Maybe it's in there. Well, I have, oh, it might be in there. Maybe it's. We didn't even there. tease that, Kevin. <laughs> Did it's we in tease the it? Title. It's in the stream title. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, we, we, there's an unboxing coming up that you guys are going. This is going to be our that. Geraldo moment. <laughs> Geraldo, <laughs> he's what's opening the up the. Uh, yeah, what's in the safe? <laughs> no one knows what that means. Well, actually, a lot of people are old enough to know. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking to children. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, Wonka also got a minor update. Uh, it was just mostly bug fix kind of stuff. So yeah, if you got a Wonka, you can grab that. Uh, can I? Can I say I, I am? I, I. We are due for a update on pirates, though. We are. It's like. If I have any criticism, it's that the last update was maybe in November, and that game has been out for coming up on a year now, and there's no final wizard mode, and there's other callouts that need to go in the game, um, like the cannon and stuff like that. So it's awesome that Dialed In is getting more polished and stuff, but we got to see a little love for uh, Pirates. We should, we should have a talk a with bit. Joe and, uh, a little bit. and Kiefer. A little bit. Just have a little chat. I'm, I'm, I'm itching for it, man. Yeah, I haven't. I, I actually stopped like playing it because... I told you this before I might say on the stream. I got towards the end. I was like, oh, no, no, I don't want to. I don't want to do it until the end's there. Yeah. So I kind of scaled back because I'm like, it's going to come out next month. Next, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm itching, man. Yeah. All right. It's a great game. I've started playing it more for score. Like I've, I've started playing. Um, who's, the, who's the character that get, lets you score multi-ball jackpots easier? Is that Barbosa? The, the, which Multi, one? The multi-ball jackpots. So you can, Makes it easier. Yeah. Uh, Blackbeard or Barbosa? Oh, Blackbeard's timer. Barbosa is, yeah. is easier. Um, yeah, I started playing with him, and I'm like, you just start hitting jackpots. I like stack up all the multi balls, and it's like super jackpots all over yeah. the place. So that's not worth that much. <laughs> yeah, but it's still fun. It's a good flail fest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. You, that right target on the uh, on the left ramp starts getting really valuable. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, what's up this week in pinball? Yeah, we're we always live. we always do live podcasts. It's surprise! It's never been. There, this is our 40th episode, right? Yep. It's Always never live. been pre-recorded, never edited. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. <laughs> That's uh, right. What else? Pinberg's coming up. I said that. Are you hyped yeah. for Pinberg? Hyped. Oh, I'm a little bummed, though, because our fellow bros, Jay uh, can't go because he's working. So that's Jay's fault. Yeah. As usual. It's the one week a month that he actually works. That's right. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey didn't make it in. So we're gonna miss those bros. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll we'll dump an energy drink in their name or something. <laughs> pour a monster out for yeah, him. Yeah, <laughs> pour a monster out for him. Uh, uh, I think Jeff's gonna come down on Saturday. Though, he's so. coming down on Saturday, and uh, Martha Donovan. Oh, pushy pushy galore. <laughs> uh, we'll be down there on Saturday, so you guys can say hi to, and harass her. Ask her for autographs. There you go. Yeah, yeah. She's she's. Jay's not coming down at all. Jay's not is, coming down. He's so. the, the fan favorite. Is not even going to show. I'm going to break it to you guys right now, so you have time to prepare and, yeah. and grieving process and all that. But yeah. no, Jay. Okay, sorry. So send him your hate mail, or uh, he he won't read it anyways. No, he doesn't know that we're streaming right now. Uh, so t- give me your top Pinberg tip for somebody who might not have ever gone before. Somebody's going for their first. My year. top pin- top Pinberg tip. Top tip. All right. So here's the deal. Give wear, the tip. wear some comfortable shoes. Okay. That's it. I mean, number one. It's going to be a miserable experience if you don't have comfortable shoes. Buy the most comfortable shoes you can. Uh, I think I've got like Adidas like Air Foam or something like that. Air Cloud or something yeah. like that. I have those too, actually. They're so Highly good. They're, they're so good. Yeah. Um, that's number one tip. Uh, I'll give my top tip. My top tip is go take a power nap in the afternoon. Power nap's good if you have time. Yeah. It's tough. It depends where your hotel is. Bring some snacks so you have some food. To eat as well because again a lot of it's just you're fighting against yourself mm. you know you don't want to get over caffeinated but you want to have some you don't nope. get too tired uh don't you don't get want too hungry fatigued <laughs> you can try to sit when you can mm. I, I recommend that as well um earplugs it doesn't get super loud in there yeah. but like 
you can put some earplugs in just to kind of cut down the stimulus. And it, it depends what kind of player you are, too, if you get... <laughs> there you go. Skip Nanny's got the top tip. He That's nailed it. it. Drop the mic. <laughs> Use the odor, please. Public service announcement. Thank you. It Thank doesn't you, matter how many times you say that, Skip. And then uh, night by, like, about 9.30 at night. Mm. Uh-huh. Yep. Please. It's for everybody's good. Yep. And wash your hands <laughs> when you come out. I like how people seem to start stretching more at like yeah. 9.30 uh, when things yeah. are looking a little rank. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there's your Pinburg tips. Yeah. Uh, Pinburg, uh, you play a lot of pinball. Uh, there's two days of qualifying and then finals on Saturday. If you don't make the finals, you can play in the Intergalactic Tournament. There's the Women's International Pinball Tournament on Sunday. Yeah. Lots of pinball. And there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of arcade games and console games and cosplay there's they're not doing any uh they're not doing any conferences or like seminars this year oh. which they were pretty sparsely attended anyways but okay. there's gonna be a ferris wheel what where i don't know it's on the sponsorship page what okay be a ferris wheel no, all right no bouncy houses but they're gonna have a ferris wheel weird yeah that's weird yeah okay all right we'll see <laughs> don't read the chat rudy you're looking good buddy uh all right so let's give some buffalo updates there's been some some stuff happening in, in our area yeah i'll let you so, the first one. so some good news you guys remember some bad news back in june i think we mm-hmm. not late may early june uh we lost pinball machines at community beer works uh they no longer wanted pinball which was a downer but in my back pocket, I knew some good news that I had to wait to announce because Resurgence Brewing Company have been our saviors, and uh, we moved machines there. So we now have seven pinball machines at Resurgence Brewing Company, and as a matter of fact, it's in a really good location. Like at CBW, they were it was like a cool room, but it was hidden. These are like front and center, out and open. So check it out. Pinball's back, baby. Woo. We've got that. Another place that doesn't get enough love for us is Lake Ward Brewing uh, brewery lake ward spirits sorry uh the barrel factory there's a bunch of names that's a really cool spot we took uh skip and uh rudy soup and his mayonnaise book there uh <laughs> we did there's like uh there's like a cider place in there there's a, a bar there's a distillery there's a kombucha place and like the pinball machines are in this lobby there yeah. um so a really cool spot check that out and of course Masuda chow's yep so Things are good. Things are back in business in Buffalo. You might say we're reviving pinball in Buffalo in Western New York. Don't say that. People get upset. <laughs> I know. You might say it. You, I'm saying you might say it. It's not you necessarily might. the truth. That's right. Um, but it is. We, it is. Yeah. Um, speaking of reviving, leagues, we've got our leagues starting up for the fall, or at least... So I, I've been working on that, believe it or not. I told you. Uh, right now, I'm trying to figure out how many teams we can have because we have more locations mm-hmm. to have stuff at. So computing that. And we'll be announcing, I think we'll announce Team League first because that comes before uh, League League. Mm-hmm. So we'll hopefully get that out uh, maybe this week, maybe next week. Teams can start signing up. That will start in September after Labor Day and go to like early, mid-December. Mm-hmm. That's a fun time. Yeah. For all of people locally listening to this, if you're going to do any social pinball, competitive pinball, that's the one to do because it's free to join, first of all. You can't beat that. And it's super low pressure. Yep. Just a good time. Meet some good people. Go to several different locations in Buffalo. You cannot beat it. Yep. And uh, it's it's definitely one of the things that gets people into pinball the most around here. Uh, it's definitely our most participated in league or tournament that we have regularly. Um, if you're not in Buffalo and you want to emulate it where you live, you can get all the rules and how it all works on our website at buffalopinball.com. Yeah, which can, we uh, essentially got from New York City Pinball and then it... We implemented it, and yeah. it kind of tweaked by Toronto League. So yeah, we're in a nice groove now with what it is. Yep, that's how that's how pinball leagues and ideas tend to happen. Like somebody comes up with a good idea, and it's like, oh, I want to try that, but I'm going to adapt it a little bit to what I want to try or what works better for my community and stuff. So definitely check that out and grab it and, and make it your own. Do it. Do it. And that's it for Buffalo updates. Let's move to game room updates. I got some game room updates. You always have game room updates. Number one is that beauty right over your shoulder there. Look at that. Big bucks. I'm surprised, Safari, you didn't, I'm surprised you didn't have it on, but there's probably but some glare or something. It's, it's a little uh, noisy. It's got a really noisy exhaust fan yeah. in it right now. Oh, okay. I have a new one that I'm going to replace it with. But Kevin's dreams come true. Just, I can shoot uh, wild animals uh, in pixel form. And you've been streaming that? Uh, I, we streamed it once during our summer camp. In the summer camp, yeah. yeah. I'll stream it more, but yeah. uh, it's fun. You're too good at it at this point. <laughs> I'm not that good at it. 
stupid like cows always come out and get in your way. You do get a, well, you get aggressive like, oh, yeah. and you'll you'll You're I know. Like, oh, I'm gonna get it. That's my only hope. Turns and bam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. But it's fun. It uh, it's one of the I like it. So I've said this before, but I like to have a a gun game in the in the game room for folks who come over because it's like gun games and driving games are something everybody can understand even if you know pinball you can understand is at least flip the flippers right but gun games and, and shooters and um drivers are uh, kind of number one so i like to have a little something for everybody i also like the variety myself uh because i don't always feel like playing pinball Shh. i like to mix it up a little bit sometimes i want to play video games and um i've been playing that so yeah i've been on the hunt for one of those for a while i was looking all over and i had found some in pennsylvania and i was considering you know renting a car to go get it but then it's all the additional expense and time on top of that. Luckily, a uh, former league member had one. Uh, he's got a, a stash of video arcade games. And he actually had two. He had this one and a, a Big Buck Pro. But I went for the Safari because it's got the crazy cabinet. And uh, I'm going to be upgrading it to World. You can upgrade it to World, which then you can visit Australia. And then you can shoot deer in the United States as well. So perfect. It's, kill a, all it's the a animals. world tour. I yeah. kill all the, the world pixelized animals. Yeah, yes, perfect. Exactly. How much does that thing weigh? Like, what's that moving it? Uh, the problem with that too is it's super top heavy because it's really tall and the monitor is way up high because you're it's like shooting. a seer yeah yeah um so yeah it's top heavy thank you it came with delivery too which was awesome oh yeah he just what are you throwing like a pickup truck or is he yeah, got a trailer pickup truck wow yep so he brought it out for me that was the that was really what pushed me over the top i'll say this before and i'll say it again in a million times kevin's got the best setup because there's no stairs it just goes in his garage comes in and that's it that's it like it's super easy the truck to up. move things in and out of mm-hmm. your garage you haven't made i do I, I do not take it for granted. I truly appreciate it. It's the way you do it. I mean, that really is. Uh, so, Big Buck, they, I, I was looking for one of those for like a year, so I'm glad I kind of like tracked one down locally that's in good shape. Um, the other problem that arose is that I'm now, I had to like fit it in here. It was either sell a game or squeeze it in. So, I had to do a little game room Tetris and I moved. So, the Jaguar kiosk used to be over there, but that's a little bit narrower side to side than everything else. So, I put that over here with my JJP games and squeeze it in and push everything down. So we're really close to the door over here now. Um, so there's not as much room for the podcast setup, but everything fit without selling anything. Bottom line is if I buy anything else, something's got to go. <laughs> got to make room, got to make money. So uh, that's where we're at now. Uh, repair wise, I had a couple issues with Swords of Fury. I fixed some flippers on that. And I was just playing T2 yesterday and the vertical up kicker, the little like thing that pops the ball up. I, I was kept trying to shoot the scoop behind the skull or under the skull. I'm like, it's not going in there. What the hell is in it? So I looked in and the vertical up kicker popper is just like sitting in there, not attached anymore. So I have to figure out how to attach that. So pinball, it breaks. You play it, it breaks, you fix it, you play it again. There you go. That's my gamer updates. Yeah. That's pretty good. Let's get a nickel update. Has some. I've got no updates. My my buck is broken. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay. I listen. I summertime is like time off from pinball, first of all. Mm-hmm. And I also, I say this before. I don't think I'm moving anything out of my collection, so something's coming in, and, and there's not a game that I currently want. So it's gonna it's gonna be like riding this like no update for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, you been you started a new side thing though. You're yeah, cheating at me. I, I did. I did. <laughs> listen, you're welcome to be my co-host. <laughs> nope. You've got the open nope. open spot. I, I exactly. <laughs> exactly. Don't let him. Don't let him fool you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so because I'm not doing enough, and because I'm not busy enough, I'm torturing myself enough. Uh, I decided to start up a VR podcast called VR the VR Gaming Podcast. Look at that. Wow. Easily SEO, searchable term. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how people don't understand SEO because that was available. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. <laughs> All right. And my Twitter handle. Guess what it works out to be? VR Gaming Podcast at Podcast VR at Podcast VR. There That's you like you could sell yeah. that for money. <laughs> That's good. So I started that up. Uh, there's just a couple episodes. I plan to add more and do a podcast at least once a month. Uh, the format is, is sort of similar, going over the news and providing a commentary on what's going on in VR gaming with games, hardware, and then do some reviews of games. And I think what I'll do is, because uh, we you've got a lot of people who listen to the show, and they're and they're all gamers, right? If you're playing pinball, you're a gamer. You're probably playing video games. If you haven't played VR yet, first of all, do yourself a favor and find a friend who's got VR. Go to a VR gaming place and just try it, because I don't know how you can call yourself a gamer and not have played VR at this point. It's legit. It's not a gimmick. It's amazing. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is is maybe in a month or so, 
after I get some more uh, podcasts out, I'll do like a beginner's guide to VR, like what you need to know, some of the terminology in it, like what's a good headset to get per budget and just help people get into it and steer them in the right direction. Uh, but you can check it out again on Twitter. It's uh, VR gaming podcast, same on Facebook. And like I said, there's a couple episodes out and I'll be releasing some like maybe every week and a half, two weeks early on and then maybe going to once a month. We'll see. Okay. But there's a hell of a lot more news to talk about Major in man. VR gaming than there is in pinball. I bet so, they release more than one pin every three months. One, one game every three months. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of games. And there's a lot to talk about because there were three headsets at least, actually four, like, but like three major headsets that came out in the past like two months mm -hmm. so valve released their uh brand new headset which we talked about a little bit then oculus quest so lots lots to talk about but things are really good in vr right now there you go vr gaming action all right i think that's going to bring us to our uh review i'm going to try to help habermania first of all he says motion sickness ended his vr career here's the here's the deal with motion sickness here's a pro tip i've i've read that only five percent of people cannot overcome motion sickness so you might be in that five percent but a lot of times people will have some motion sickness. What you want to do when you get into VR is spend some time in it. When you start feeling sick, get out of it. And then go back maybe a day later and spend some more. Your, your mind will adjust to it. It will get used to it. Uh, the reason you have motion sickness is your brain thinks you're poisoned. Yeah. Because like motion's moving, but in no, your body knows it's not moving. So it thinks like, oh my God, I've been poisoned. I need to throw up. Uh, your, your mind will, and body will get used to it over time. It should so there you go hopefully it helps vr it might make you throw up <laughs> yeah <laughs> there you go all right it's review time we're going to talk about some world poker tour we'll be right back Let's go. Oh, it's not there. It's not uh oh, there. there it is. That's the screw up for all of you. That's there the beautiful piece of artwork that y'all wanted to see. There we go. It's the uh, it's the World Poker Tour. That's right. Uh, so this is a Stern 2006 game, uh, designed by Steve Ritchie, art by Brian Rude, uh, who I looked up, and you may be surprised to find out he only did one art for one pinball machine, and this is it. And you're mm -hmm. gonna see why in just a moment. So stick with it. Um, software by Keith Johnson and Dwight Sullivan. Sound by Chris Graner. Pricing, uh, Pinside puts this at about a $2,900 game. And uh, of note is that it was the first SAM game. So it was the first game on the SAM platform. All right. Before we get into the review, I want to point out something that was pointed out to me. That, uh, you know, we showed you the back glass on uh, Lord of the Rings, the LE. Yeah. That had the, the beard issue. Oh, shit. What is it? Uh, are you ready? Okay. Look how long his hand is. Uh, I, I saw someone mention a comment. I was like, hand. Wow. That's so bad. That's on the back glass. Like yeah, they look at, so, yeah, you, right, if so. you're just listening to the podcast, you can see one of the guy's hands who's got his arms crossed. Yeah, it's, it's so the, a total, his, uh, total fuck up. Left hand. Um, and he, there it is. Look there, out. there it is. Kevin's zooming in. <laughs> zooming. Okay. I ruined it for everybody. What I heard about... Have you heard about the story behind the art? No. So I thought, listen, you people on YouTube will let me know if I'm right or wrong. This is we'll, we'll find out in the future. You're going to be wrong, I'm sure. But that's okay. fine. Continue. Whatever. It gets <laughs> it makes people on YouTube happy. Yeah. But I heard that like they had to change the art at the last minute. So that's like a last minute backlash. Like they didn't exactly have long to work on it. So that's that's what you get. You don't say I mean that. W if that story pans out, then then it it makes sense. It it, it would make sense as to why it's so bad. All right, so uh, let's let's talk about the art some more. Uh, that's first up in our rundown. Uh, the back glass, as we saw, is kind of like a, a painting style. I would say not not really like hand drawn. It seems like it's painted to me. Okay, uh, but it's it's the three. Folks from the show, I guess. I, I never cannot. This. I've had this in my place, and I can't unsee that hand now. <laughs> it's welcome. better than a penis, though. <laughs> it's true. There it is again. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the three folks from the show. Uh, it says World Poker Tour, and it's got some cards and money. There you go. Texas Hold'em. Uh, there's the hand again. I mean, it's not... People, people rag on it, yeah. and 
That's not as bad. I think the uh, the playfield art is is far more hideous. Yeah, it's not a good looking game. It's the playfield art's terrible. I think. Yeah. The, the, maybe the backlash is really bad, but the playfield art is so bad that it makes the backlash look reasonable. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, look we'll at just... that. What the fuck is that shit? The lightning bolts <laughs> and this like y- big yellow like outline stripe and then like the like it's not a painting it's like a photo photoshop of the lady yeah i don't know it's just so it screams like late 80s gottlieb art <laughs> yeah it's uh it's something else there's the there's the there's some some cards and lightning that's your the, that's that's the, your expression it's, it's something some, else it's something else oh that's true <laughs> we're, we're not looking at that um uh, yeah so art is not good moving on sound what yeah is, Let's talk about the sound on World Poker Tour. Um, it's got like I'm trying to think about the music. It's got like guitar riffs and yeah, um, lots of like poker chip kind of sounds. Yeah, when you hit the spinners and call outs from the the folks on the show, right? Yeah, it's got com- like commentary about what's going on in the situation. It's got more than one announcer. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 a game about a poker show, so like I think the sounds good for what it is. You know, yeah. like you're not going to be like, man, you got to come over and hear World Poker Tour. Yeah, it sounded really good. The <laughs> sound of that game will blow you, you away. When you had it in your basement, you didn't just turn it on and hit the start button for background sounds. No, no. but the sounds the sounds good. Yeah. Like you know, when you can, when you're starting with the art so bad, yeah, the sounds a welcome relief. We're working our way back up from from the art. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're, we're coming back. Um, all right, let's talk about toys. So let's just get into some of the more interesting aspects of the game. Um, so it's. I guess toys. When I think of toys, I think of like interactive objects on the game. Nothing really stands out as unique on this, but it's got an interesting play field layout, I would say. Uh, it's got the upper play field, which uh, I guess would be the main toy. Let's see if I, I know I got a picture of it here. You know what? Let's, we can't just start making up things as toys, but traditionally aren't toys, so there's no toys in this game. Yeah. There's not a single toy. Maybe the, the fork in the back that holds the ball for the captive ball, you know, for the, the ace in the hole. I don't, I don't think I have any. I mean, again, I there that's a stretch. That's just I. Some people would agree and argue with you, but that's a stretch that that's a toy. Yeah. It okay. holds a captive ball that you bash. Right. You know, it's like Stern's doing that now with magnets. Mm. But I be a stretch to call it a toy. No. Nope. You know, <laughs> in like we're, in Big Buck Hunter, you don't call the thing that holds the ball the up post when you got to hit it for bird yeah. you don't call that a, you don't think of it a toy yeah. because yeah. there's a toy in the this game a post yeah there's a couple toys yeah. so <laughs> i'm stretching i'm trying i'm trying here world War Tour. i'm trying oh it fails just like mustang <laughs> has trying. no toys i know and uh uh deadpool oh, the, this is not a well <laughs> well no it's got the sword it's got the sword yeah where you like the balls on the sword that's not a toy yeah. though little, little deadpool no this is it's a head. stopper <laughs> and that, that's not a toy either it's yeah. a bobblehead yeah it's not an interactive toy sorry <laughs> so yeah, you're right. It doesn't have any. And uh, Iron Maiden. Also yeah, it's not, I'm not blaming you. Right. You're the victim in the, <laughs> in the story. Well, all right. So it doesn't have a traditional toy. But one feature that you could highlight in this game is that it's got how many drop targets? Like 16? A bazillion. A bazillion. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin said I counted them. Okay. It's got a ton of drop targets, which is cool, especially when drop targets are somewhat rare in modern pinball machines. Mm-hmm. This game has them in spades. See what I did? Oh. I see. Mm-hmm. There's a. I think it's four, like there's eight of them right there on the left. Twelve, sixteen, nailed it. Ooh. God, I'm good. It's also got that LED panel in the middle of the playfield. It's got an LED cool. panel, which is like okay, whatever. But mm-hmm. it's cool. You can see your hand. Mm-hmm. In, in in between that shitty art. <laughs> the more I look at that art, the more it's just it's just layering on how bad it is. Oh, it's bad. Mm-hmm. And that, that helps keep the price down on it though. I think that's what it is because people who like to just look at pinball machines and not play it don't want that game. They don't. <laughs> I I would want this in my game room. I would I would have it for a while, but put it next to your Gottlieb's. There you go. Exactly. All right, let's talk about the display and lighting. Um, so the the, the playfield um, LED panels are part of the display. I would say uh, it's got a traditional DMD. Um, pretty good animations from what I you know. It's got like faces of the people that you play and um during different uh different modes it's got some some interesting things that happen but it's nothing above it's super basic yeah it's 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 below average i would say yeah uh rules oh no gameplay 
Oh, we, we didn't talk about lighting. Let's talk about lighting. It has lights. It has lights. They light up. They nothing to write home about. Yeah. Yeah. Forgettable. Mm-hmm. Nah, this is gonna be a quick review. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, gameplay. Gameplay. So this is a game with a lot of shots in the back. <clears throat> yes, it is. It's a wide open game. Shots are in the back. Yep. Which I kind of like that. I yep. like those style games. I don't have a really great playfield shot, but there's like all this stuff you're seeing in the back is way back. That uh, the the shot just to the left of the the upper playfield is is super far back where it says extra ball right there. If you're watching the video, you can shoot that. It goes all the way to the backboard. It's got to be one of the longest shots in pinball. Um, yeah, pretty, it's pretty true. Cool. It's got the the two little um, uh, kind of like flip around ramps. Uh, it's got the one on the left for the river turn flop shot there. And then it's got if the one to the right of the mini play field, it goes into a scoop, kicks it to the upper play field. And then there's a, there's a ramp on the right also that feeds the upper play field, right? Yes. Yeah. See. Uh, and then you got your upper play field with the, uh, there's a captive ball and a hurry up. And all right, yeah, there's the ramp that feeds the upper play field. Uh, and a spinner. The spinners advance your, your tricks and you get a multi ball that way. Um, uh, yeah, the upper play field, you can, uh, the mystery scoop on the left there, the ace in the hole, which holds the ball, and then you can start a multi-ball up there, and uh, that's about it, right? So, despite the fact that this is a Steve Ritchie game, the King of Flow, uh, this is a stop-and-go game, which honestly makes sense given the theme. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you'll, you'll hit a shot, it will hold on the ball, and flip, like, more cards over because you're playing these games of, of, of poker. Right. So, again, it's like... the. The way the game plays fits perfectly with the theme. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're looking for a game of flow and you think Steve Ritchie, this is not it. I know sometimes people change the rules so it doesn't hold the ball, but then I think you lose the spirit of the game or the way the game is meant to be played. It's also a longer playing game. Mm-hmm. Uh, with that said, I like, I like the shots in the game. Mm-hmm. And the shot layout and shooting all the shots all the way back there, they feel really good. And I don't mind a stop and go game once in a while especially in a game that, that fits the theme. And you could be playing this game for quite some time. Yeah. It's sort of like you have a long playing game on it and you're like, I'm good. Yep. Um, you know, if, if you're into long playing games then this will fit nicely in your collection, if you don't like longer playing games then you might lose interest pretty quickly. Yeah. When I think of this game, I think of like, it, it's slow and methodical. Um, I think the rules aren't totally apparent when you're playing it for the first time. I think that's kind of like a, a key for a signature, right? There's a lot there, but it doesn't always present itself totally obviously what you're, what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Um, There's but, modes in it too. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, I think it's a great home game for that reason, right? Because there's a lot to do in it. There's a lot to learn. You're not going to be step up and be like, oh, hit this to start a mode, hit the flashy arrows to complete the mode, max mode. I don't know. Yeah, there's orders yeah. you might want to do things. You can change what mode you go into before you shoot it because the flipper buttons will change them around. So um, there's like a way to do, I think it's like three times a shot. So there's a way to dissect the game and kind of really nerd out and get into it. So again, if you like deep rule set, this might be the game for you. I thought sometimes, I, I, again, I'm going to say things that I've heard years ago. Uh-huh. I'm just open up my mouth hole and, and sure. make noise. A chat will let us know. When we're yeah. yeah. I, I thought I heard someone say that this game is deeper than like Lord of the Rings in terms of the rules in it. Yeah. I don't so, know. So, you know, so it's a Keither game. He made both. We'll see. It's some, again, YouTube, you can let me know how, how wrong or right I am. It, I would say it's definitely got the depth. Like Lord of the Rings is deep, but so is, so is World Poker Tour. Just yeah, yeah. The, the worst <laughs> theme, right? Uh, Skip Maddie asked if I ever got to the Keeper Invitational. I did not. I didn't own this game. I was I was babysitting it for like almost two years. It was, yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, so no Keeper for you. All right. Uh, well, that, we kind of talked about rules a little bit. Let's go over, you know, you had it in your house f- for two years. What, what's kind of the overview of the rules? How, how do you attack this game? So... It kind of starts off. I'm trying to think how it's been a while since I played it. You're you're spending a lot of time getting to the upper play field because that's safe. So it's sort of like get to the upper play field and you can lock a ball up there and then try and get some multi ball. And you're sort of like you, you have to play a mode first before you can get into the other multi balls in the game. Or not at least like the traditional like locked multi balls. Another multi ball is hitting like the spinner on left and right. Mm-hmm. So it seems like you're in multi ball a lot in this game. You're always sort of like, it feels like you're always working towards multi-ball or getting into multi-ball. So it's like maybe getting, starting a mode, but the modes aren't going to be worth a ton. At least that's the way my impression from playing the game. 
um, you're like, even if you're in a mode or not in a mode, you're trying to start multi-ball. Uh, and you're also hitting the left shot or the right ramp, and that will flip over the next card. So you're trying to play through these hands of poker. And there's cities that you travel to. So like the first city, I, I think it's random. But the first city, maybe you play like one game of cards and um, whether you have a great hand or not, like it's over and then you go to the next city. And the next city, you might have to play several hands of cards. So you're hitting more shots to progress through the game. That's, that's essentially it. Um, it's a lot of just trying to play these hands of cards and, and make your way through the game. Yep. Uh, but uh, I don't know. There's, there's different ways to tackle and approach it. It's a, it's a fun game. It's interesting because you can, you can spend a lot of time with it and dig down deep and appreciate there's the rules are there to keep your interest and to justify having a game like this in your collection. RLMS uh, switch gears is the big one, right? I don't, I don't know. RLM. It's been a while since I played this game. Yeah. Same here. I mean, I've only I played it at your house when you had it, but I've never owned it, so I don't know the ins and outs of it. Yeah, that way. Uh, so let's let's take it into last ability. How do you what do you think of this game in a, a home collection? How long is it going to last? Well, this game has a few things going for it. Number one is it's game I've recommended for years for somebody who's like just getting into pinball and they don't have a huge budget. You know, a lot of times people might get into pinball and they don't just want to drop. Fifty six hundred dollars on a brand new game. They want to dip their toe in, mm-hmm. so maybe they have a thousand. Two, maybe they have like a couple thousand. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I would say, look, World Poker Tour is kind of a great value because it's it's a it's a newer game compared to like a nineties game, which is older and might have more parts fail on it. So World Poker Tour is an option. It's also got deep rules, so you can spend a lot of time with. Um, and it's maybe a little more forgiving because it's a longer playing game. So as a newer player you might not have games that last only a few seconds, so you might feel good about yourself. Right. Um, I think that's a good argument for this is a great game for newer players. Experienced players will like the depth of the rules. It's not a good-looking game, as we mentioned, but if you're a real player, then you don't care about that. You care if the game's good. Last ability, in the large collection, you can keep it there forever just because there's a lot to do in it. With me, I tend to get bored of longer playing games after a while and it starts feeling samey or I get all the shots down and I'm playing the game for like a half an hour at a time and that's boring to me. I like when pinball is like a little more random and stuff like that. So it's not a game that I am I would have back in my collection or back in my place, but I was happy for the year or two that I had it. Yeah, it seems like like I would definitely want to own one and play it for a while and really learn it. See if I can dig deep into it and get to key for invitational. Probably not, but uh, those really deep uh, key for games are, are tough to get to edit those uh, those final wizard modes. But that's what makes them great in a collection, right? There's always that carrot dangling out there to kind of keep you coming back and try again. Yeah, because if you blow through a game uh, on your first try, you're going to be like, "Well, I've kind of seen it all." Unless it's like <coughs> a game Monsters. you absolutely love. Oh, Sorry. Oh, you all right? You got a little Sorry. something there. Monsters. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then you're going to be like. All right, what's next? Sell it and move on. Um, so on that, from that end, I think it's 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 definitely got uh, more last ability, especially for the price. Holy shit! I just realized that Game of Thrones got an update that didn't need it, but Monsters did not. Dwight, I'm sorry. I'm thinking out loud. <laughs> uh, you know, different rules for different games. Different folks, different strokes. Yeah. All right. All right, so let's let's go to our rating. Let's wrap it up before I get myself in too much trouble. <laughs> All right, let me find the uh, the website action here. Uh, All right, so we're gonna go to our our score key. Oh, man, I'm doing this live. I didn't even think of a rating for it. Zero to two is a burn it. Yep. Three to five is an expensive nightlight. Six to eight is a solid game. And nine to ten, get your wallets out. Nick Lane. All right. Actually, I'll go first. All right. I always make you go first. All right. That's really uh, gentlemanly of you. Because I, you like to put it up a point. Yeah. Like, if I, if I say, yeah. like, one, you say 1.5. One, one and a half. Yeah. Um, so, uh, this game is a six for me. It's, it's a solid game, but just barely. Like, it's got a lot against it. It's ugly. Uh, it's about poker, which I don't care about. The, it's got that hand. It's got... The hand. <laughs> It's good. the music and DMD and lighting are just kind of meh, but it's uh, got deep rules. It's a good price. It's a good bang for the buck game. So 
I think for all that going forward, it puts it in the solid game category at a six. All right, so I've spent considerable time with this game, and I, I, I got to say it's a seven in my book. I think the, the rules are great. It's one of the, the deeper games out there, so you're going to get some good last ability out of it. Uh, you can get over. You can change the translate if it bothers you. Uh, you're not playing the artwork in it. The cabinet's fine, by the way. Yeah. Uh, the cabinet's yeah. fine. You can talk about that. And the shots are good on it. Mm-hmm. And also, I like the theme integration between the rules and the way the game physically plays. I think there's a place for a game like this in your collection. Um, a little more stop and go, a little bit deeper, a little longer. Uh, so, yeah, definitely a, definitely a seven. It's a solid game. It's a solid game. I have a good amount of respect for a poker tour. And you cannot beat the price. Oh, yeah. You can do a lot worse for a lot more money than World Poker Tour. There you go. You can do worse than World Poker Tour. That's your endorsement from Nick Lane. A lot worse. A lot worse. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's bring it home. We got some listener. Well, we have one question from a viewer slash listener, uh, our buddy Hey Romania in chat. He asks, do you have any experience with the pin? Wondering your thoughts on build quality and playability. So personally, I've only played the Spider-Man one. I played it at Replay FX last year because... Um, Project Pinball had one in their booth, and I was like, oh, I got to try this. And build quality-wise, it felt like a pinball machine, like flipping it. Agreed. The cabinet's a little it's a little weird. It's not your traditional cabinet. Um, I think the new Stern Star, Star Wars gets a little closer to that traditional look and feel. Um, but it's a fun shooting game. Um, the I mean, they took the play field, and they put it in to supreme into a full cabinet so it's it's essentially a full game standard stern pinball machine in a slightly scaled down cabinet yeah with a little weird some some unusual features like the spider-man's got the speaker in the front instead of a coin door and it's got that goofy like color blocky color dmd kind of thing going on and the the star wars one has that that it's like take my phone and put it four feet away from me and try to read it um, yeah so there are, there are some downsides to it obviously but um uh i think build quality wise it's, it's solid at least the the first couple were questionable as far as like accessibility like getting in there and you couldn't like lift the glass on the the first couple of the uh avengers and the and the transformers you couldn't get into it unless i think you had to go underneath and like take the cabinet apart or something like that so um i don't know what, what's your thoughts on the build quality and it's been a long time since i played it and i probably played the transformers original pin the most i just yeah i mean i think what you said i agree with i just don't get it per se like i don't know who i would recommend the pin to i can't think of anybody that i would i would personally recommend the the these pins to it's like if you want a pinball machine you know for that kind of money I can point you in the direction in something that's a much better value. That's going to have some resale value that you're going to be able to sell when you're sick of it, which you're going to get sick of it eventually, no matter what age or person you're getting this for. So you might as well get a game that's going to hold its value and have a lot more to offer. Yeah. That's what I was just going to say. It's like, you know, you're going to take a hit when you buy this. It's yeah. What's like, the market? Who's, who's going to buy that when you're done with it? Exactly. That's, uh, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know. I've never looked and tried to buy a pin, but I can't imagine the market is is that good. Certainly not like what it is for a pinball machine. Yeah, I mean, even classic pinball machines like '90s machines, they price keeps going up on them instead of going down. So, yeah, um, if you're gonna buy one, wait and get one to use. That I would say, I don't know, or just don't buy it. Buy a real pinball machine. Buy a real pinball machine. <laughs> Again, people are going, oh, you're not the market. Not, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I know, but who do who do you recommend that thing for? Yeah. It's still a pinball machine that's harder to sell it still mm-hmm. costs as much as a pinball machine yeah and it's not like they didn't make a real stern uh star wars machine so yeah it's, it's not like oh it's star wars so people are gonna buy it i i wish like in, in, in all honesty because i i love marketing i love sales and i try to understand things i i would i would love it explained to me by by somebody who decided to do the pin right because i maybe naively am talking and i have no idea what i'm talking about yeah. they keep on doing it it's not doesn't mean it's a good idea, mm-hmm. but I imagine that there's a market and they're selling it, and that's fine. I just don't understand the nature of that market. Yeah, that's all. There you go. All right, we almost forgot the most important thing. I didn't put it in the rundown, and I oh my god, it. here so, it is. Here we go. This you have been Take waiting it away, for. Kevin. All right. So, uh, if you guys hadn't heard, I am a Stern Insider, and uh, as a Stern Insider, I get a welcome packet 
Um, so if you're following along, I signed up as a Stern Insider at the end of January. And now we're getting into late July. So six-ish months later, I'm getting my welcome packet. And only because I saw that Chris Bucci was also a insider. And I was like, hey, Chris, how did you get your, how long did it take to get your welcome packet? And he says, eh, like two weeks. I was like, no, not like four or five months. He goes, no. So Because like, you're oh. Kevin Manny at Buffalo <laughs> Pinball. <laughs> they, they pushed me off for another like four months. They're listening to this. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I emailed him and I didn't get a response. Then I emailed him again and I got a response. And they said, oh, we saw that you made a payment. It's in our file, but we didn't send you anything yeah so. you got flagged you're yeah, definitely totally he's did. definitely flagged they put me by the way stern when they send me when they send me parts uh -huh. or, or like promo stuff they send it to the wrong address and i've asked them to update it i've asked one two at least three different people like four different times to change it because my neighbors get pissed and they still fucking <laughs> send it to the wrong one so there you go they got my address right at least so they did bottom line is so i got my welcome packet and i was like we should um, unbox this on the stream here so. we go um, I don't even know. First I don't, off, know. You'll see I don't really it, care, but it was um so there's a box in here and it was shipped in this plastic uh mailer. So yeah. I can already feel that it's crushed. I have those um uh, those are mailers that I use to send like t-shirts out. So if you got a t-shirt from us back in the day, it's exactly what uh I used. But you didn't put it in a box that got crushed? No. No, okay. All right. So let's I I snipped it open already. So here we go. You already know what's in it? Uh, You're cheating. I have an idea. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh look at that. It's flat. Oh. That's weird. Uh -huh. Why would they? Okay. <laughs> it looks like a. To, I mean, it's a nice box. It looks it's like got a little a, handle on it. To go box from a fast food place, but nicer. Yeah. Like nicer. You it's got crushed. this cool little like box that's just like. It's a t shirt in there, isn't it? Oh, wait. I hear stuff moving around. Let's see. What is it? For the listeners at home, it's a stern cake. All it's right. a bomb. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's open it up. I'll open it this way so you guys can see. Uh. Uh. Oh, oh, baby. That's a shirt. I'm going to be looking fly in my Stern Pinball ringer shirt. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, Just look at look it. Look at that. I'm looking good. I'm going to be looking good. They have your size? They get it right? Uh, they got the... They, I asked them for an XL because I don't know. Sometimes shirt sizes are weird. My favorite I'd thing is about uh, uh, white shirts is, is good for showing pit stains. Oh, yeah. This is going to look... So... You can mow the lawn with that. There you go. There you go. It's, it's huge. I should have got a large. <laughs> it's massive. And on the back, it's got a little... Little pinball machine, like boom! That. Isn't that cute? That's adorable. There you go. That's what your thirty bucks gets you. What else? We that's not it though. There's you didn't even get leaked the photos in the insiders program. No, nope. no. Nope. Um. So what else we got? This is really exciting for oh, the, the, the podcast listeners in there. There's in their a, car I, at home. Here's something for the podcast listeners. It says there's a little note in here from our friends at Stern. It says, "Dear Stern Insider, All Access Member." As an all-access member, you have more ways to experience the outrageously fun world of pinball than ever before. Welcome to the community. Three, six months later. With your membership, you now have direct connection to the most talented and enthusiastic pinball people in the world. As a Stern Insider all-access member, you'll be among the first to learn about the Stern news and events through exclusive stories, an insider e-newsletter, and on SternPinball.com. To deepen your connection, all Access members can enjoy up-close and personal live webinars with game designers and developers, exclusive streams, and insider playing tips. You'll also have access to limited edition merchandise. Thank you for being, thank you for your loyalty and passion for the Stern brand, your choice in pinball, and for being a Stern Insider All Access member. Long live pinball. Good job. There you go. I did it. Oh, Stop peeking oh, in the box. Oh, I got excited. <laughs> Stop peeking in the box. <laughs> they can't see it's, it. You know what the exclusives were? All those, uh, um, all those pictures of Jurassic Park that I got through the Insider program today. Oh yeah. nope, that didn't happen. I just found it on Pinside. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what else we got in here? Uh, let's start with. Oh, it's a patch. It's kind of cool. I like that. Patches are nice. Yep. Yep. It's nice. Let's see what color. It's it's white and gray and red. Is this their new branding color now? It's gotta this, be. This is this is it is red. It looks yeah. orange. Looks yeah, orange esque. Like, we got weird lighting yeah, in here. Yeah, fair enough. All right. All right, that's cool. And there's one more thing in here. It's rattling around. <gasps> it's a pin. What is it? It's a pin, and it's got like a water mutant guy playing a pinball machine. Was it like a, the creature from the Black Lagoon kind of? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right. All right. Sweet. I can hold it. Okay. Up. That'll look good on my backpack. There you go. There you go. He's playing pinball. All right. It's stirring the pin. That's it. 
it's pin, exciting. TM. Use your trademark on that. I, I put uh, I put pinball pins on my stringy backpack, so that'll go on there. Everyone's gonna so, remember where they were when Kevin opened up his stern never, pinball never box. Uh, hey, Romania, you can uh, you can clip that. We'll do an unboxing. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube, it's gonna get all the views. There you go. That's your stern insider welcome packet. Okay, all right. Let's bring it on home. <laughs> you can uh, you can follow us on the social medias: Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Yep. Uh, Steam. We're, I actually posted to the Steam group. MySpace. MySpace. Uh, you can email us. Uh, oh, name us Jinx. Talkpinball at gmail.com with your feedbacks, your personal experience with the, uh, the Stern Insider program. Let us know. Uh, you can follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Buffalo Pinball. If you have a Amazon Prime account, it gives you a free uh, Twitch Prime account, which you can use to sub to the channel at no extra cost. It's a good way to support the support the stream, support That's the content. Right. And we have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Buffalo Pinball. You can back us there if you prefer as well. Yes. Thank you guys for your support. It means a lot to us. It's uh, it's encouraging. Yeah. It, it really is. When when people not only spend time watching or interacting, but they, they hit the donate button, they subscribe. Uh, we've been doing this podcast now for... 40 episodes? 40, yeah, 40 episodes. So we <laughs> yeah. started in February 2016, if I'm yep. not mistaken. I think Going so. strong. Yep. Enjoying doing this. And it certainly helps that uh, you guys show your appreciation for us. So we're really grateful. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we had a great night last night. I did the uh, reveal stream for Dialed In. Nice. Lots of subs, lots of bits. That's awesome. Lots of follows. Uh, so those are the nights that stuff really it kind of like reinvigorates you right You're it, like, it's it, awesome it legit does yeah it legit does so yeah. thank you guys so i'm gonna throw a little something in here at the end um i've been streaming zachariah pinball and uh I'm, I'm a vip if you didn't know i'm zachariah vip um and i've been doing monthly tournaments with uh Bazru man versus pinball Rudy soup and is there one other oh uh crow pinball that's uh, that's the the five of us um so I have more Zachariah pinball machines to be given away, like virtual ones for Steam. So if you want to follow the channel and have a chance to win, I, I will be doing that again soon the next time I do my tournament entries because we do tournaments every month. And uh, it's a really cool app. Check it out. They do a great job with it. It's a it's a it's an opportunity to get to see um, an aspect of pinball you don't get to see a lot. That's why I was interested in it, right? Like there's all these Zachariah games. I don't know how to play any of them. Um, and they also take their licenses and they, they – kind of modernize them so they have remakes which so they take all the like like think of farfalla and robot and all those games and they bring them into like dmd era and add multi balls and ramps and rules uh it's pretty cool um so check it out zachariah pinball on steam unofficial uh partner of buffalo pinball but they've been great uh and i've been having a great time streaming those games so uh shout out to mart and the team over at zachariah cool all right guys uh thanks for watching and we will see you next time tune in tomorrow night for uh, Skip Natty, Thursday night for Rudy Soup, Saturday night for Mixer Tuna, and then uh, we'll see you guys at Pinburg. See you at Pinburg. Yeah. Bye, guys.